Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Healthy Moving Podcast, the show that empowers you to exercise less, but move more so you will feel better. I am your healthy moving enthusiast, Jen Hoffman from healthymoving.com. Today's show is all about your spouse or your child, your parent, your neighbor, your friend, your coworker, that person in your life who you believe you have some information about health and wellness that can impact them positively, but you're getting a little bit of pushback as you share it. Listen, that's my job, helping people improve their health. So I have some great tips for how to really empower the loved ones in your life to be their healthiest. Also, I'm so excited to have Lindsay join me for the second half of the show. Lindsay is a member of the Healthy Moving community, and she spends most of her day on her feet. But believe it or not, standing all day can come with its own aches and pains. And Lindsay is here to share her favorite exercise for alleviating some of that pain. Whether you sit or stand all day, if you have knee issues, you definitely want to hear what Lindsay has to say. Before we get started, let me just remind you, if you need a primer on how to begin to weave more healthy moving into your life, be sure to sign up for my No Time Exercise Solution class. You can get yourself registered by texting NO TIME to 33444, or you can go to healthymoving.com forward slash free class. I would love to have you join me. When you love and care about someone, it's only natural. It's a good thing that you want to help them be their healthiest. And when you have information that you think you could share with them that would help them be healthier, of course you want to do that. But how you go about that communication is really important. In fact, it dictates whether they're going to listen to what you say and heed your advice or whether they might run in the opposite direction and ignore everything you say. So I have five tips for how to really effectively support the health and wellness of the people that you love, whether those people live under your roof or whether they're your friends, neighbors, coworkers, these tips work for all of them. And of course, I have to point out that this is the stuff that works for talking to people about their health, but this is really good advice for helping support people who are having any kind of issue. When you want to be a good friend, a good fellow human being to others, you can apply all of these tips to any situation where you're trying to support a loved one. Okay, our first one. This is not going to come as a surprise, but be an example. I hear from my students all the time that the people in their life can tell something's different. They see a change in them and then they come to them and ask them a question. Hey, I can tell something's different about you. What are you doing differently? That position is so much easier than if you go to someone and say, oh, guess what? I'm doing this new thing and it's so amazing. And and you try to kind of tell people from that perspective. Be an example. Let what you're doing kind of live out in the open so people can see the shift in you and approach you about it rather than you approaching them. The second thing is when someone does talk to you, maybe they say to you, oh, I'm having back pain, or maybe they say, I'm really struggling with my body image, or some issue that you have had in the past and that now you feel like you're on the other side of and you'd like to give them advice about. Be kind and listen. Don't just wait for them to stop talking so that you can share your story. Really listen. So often we hear something when someone's being vulnerable and sharing about themselves that just seeing them for where they're at, just being present with them can go a long way on the healing journey. We don't have to give them words. We don't have to give them specific tips or steps. Just listening And helping them feel heard and understood is extremely powerful. And if you can help them meet that need, you become a more trusted resource that they might be willing to listen to about specific steps down the line. But be present first. Listen first. Okay, my third tip. Be compassionate and be humble. Remember, you weren't born knowing whatever it is you know now. 
I try to think about this all the time when I'm teaching. Yes, I have quite a bit of information and education and training behind what I teach now, but I always try to remember what it felt like to feel stuck, to be in pain, to be at war with my body. And I try to let all of my teaching come from that awareness because that meets people where they are and puts us at the same level as them rather than us being up on a pedestal kind of talking down to them. Always be humble. Okay, my fourth tip. This is one of my favorites. Give them back their power. In his book on writing, Stephen King says about Dumbo and the fact that he could fly, Dumbo didn't need the feather. The magic was in him. I tell this to my coaching program people all the time. There's nothing that thrills me more than for them to say, hey, this ache or pain popped up, or I felt an energy dip, or I was feeling bad about my body, and I did X, Y, Z, and I feel better. See, I'm not really teaching people any kind of specific formulaic, when this happens, do that. What I'm trying to help people do and what I see as my role is giving them really a language for communicating with their own body. See, we aren't really taught that anywhere. We don't get a good education about tuning into the signals our body is sending us and then knowing how to respond to those signals. And we have a lot in our life to distract us from them. So I see my main job as helping people with that, helping people to really learn about their own body. That's empowering. They don't need me. I'm I'm teaching them information, but they're their main teacher. Their body is their main guide. We want to, when we're talking with our loved ones, we want to give them back the power. We don't want to tell them that they need some external thing. They don't need this special product, this special tool. We want to put the power back to them. We want to say, hey, I think you just need to get better connected with your body and listen. There's no one teaching that. I understand that you don't know that. Here's what I've found. Here's how I've gotten reconnected with my body. I interpret this signal that's happening with my body differently now because of what, I, what I've learned. Put the power in their hands. That is so helpful and so much more encouraging than, hey, you need X, Y, Z to fix you. Let them know that really the journey begins by looking inward, not outward. Okay, my last step, small steps. It's so tempting to want to tell people all the things we know. Hey, you could do this one and this one and this stretch and that stretch and and I do this with my diet and I do this. It is so overwhelming for people to feel like they have a mountain to climb. Instead, if we can show them, they just have to take one small step away from where they were headed and toward health it feels doable. It feels actionable. So pick your favorite stretch, pick your favorite food, pick your favorite whatever, the smallest thing you can think of to share with them to do and have them do just that one thing. Let them dip their toe in the water and slowly, once they take that one step, then they say, okay, I I did that. I had some success there. And then you can give them another thing or point them in another direction. What I tell people all the time when they're emailing me and saying, I want to get my kids to do this, or I want to get my spouse to do this. I say, you know what? Be the example and just start sharing little tiny things with them, little steps. I hear back from those people over and over again, that those little things, like always, turn into big things. And then they, their loved ones experience the kind of change that they have found in their own life as well. So that's it. Be an example. Be kind and listen. Be present. Be compassionate and humble. Give them back their power. Empower your loved ones and show them just tiny small steps. If you want a small step that you can begin to help people kind of test the waters, 
I'm doing something fun during the Olympics, and really, this is for the entire Healthy Moving community, but I put it together with the heart for giving you guys something that would be simple that you could share with other people. It's all going to be happening, the Healthy Moving Olympics, over on the Healthy Moving Facebook page. So it's facebook.com forward slash healthy moving. You don't have to sign up for anything. There's no email opt-in. There's going to be six different, quote, events that happen during the Olympics. They're going to be small steps, little tiny things that we can do to improve our health. And like I said, it's I'm making it as accessible as I can so that it's super simple, not just for the members of our community to do an experiment. I hope you all will try with me. We're going to have fun giveaways during it. It's going to be a really good time. But also, it's the perfect thing for you to share with your loved ones, just to let them kind of get a taste of what the healthy moving revolution is all about. Okay, guys, we're going to be back in just a moment and hear from Lindsay about her favorite exercise for dealing with knee pain. All right. I am so excited to have another one of my coaching program members with us. This is Lindsay joining us from Texas. Lindsay is a mom and I am so excited to hear what your favorite healthy moving exercise is, Lindsay. Well, my favorite healthy moving exercise is the human Pez dispenser. It was one that uh, definitely had a huge impact on my movement throughout my day. I do a ton of standing and cooking and Uh, We have standing surfaces all over our house, so even when I am doing work or illustrating, I usually am standing, and I realized that I was having a ton of pain and was standing incorrectly, and having that awareness of my external thigh rotation has been just mind-boggling change for me. I love that. It's so important because I think a lot of times what happens is we get kind of fixed on one alignment marker. And for a lot of people, when we start, it's like the feet straight, right? You know, the outside edges of the feet straight. And I I do give, I definitely tell people that we're working toward having the outside edges of the feet form an 11. But if you have been standing with the outside edges of your feet in the V shape, then your thighs have internally rotated in order to keep you moving forward. So the exercise that Lindsay's talking about, the human Pez dispenser, helps to bring the thighs back to neutral so that as you're aligning your feet, your thighs can also be in alignment. I love this one, not just for um, helping support your healthy leg function and healthy knees, but it's really important for your back and your pelvic floor health as well. So let me talk everybody through it. I like when you're starting to have a tactile cue. I don't know if you used a block or something when you first started, Lindsay, but I do like a tactile cue of something that you can feel to help with the rotation. So I put a block or a small pillow, something like that, between the thighs, and you want to rotate your thighs outward so that the block comes forward, hence the name human Pez dispenser. You're literally like a human Pez dispenser, externally rotating your thighs to push the block forward. It's really important what muscles you're using to make that action happen. If you're not careful, your quads will do all the work. Instead, what we want is we definitely want the legs to be vertical, and then we want to bring our awareness up to kind of the inner thigh and the groin area because it's the deep hip rotators that we want doing that. A side benefit is that one of those deep hip rotators is also a pelvic floor muscle. So this is really helpful for making sure that you have a healthy pelvic floor. So you're using those deep hip rotators up at the top of the thigh to externally rotate and move that block forward. Once you've played with it enough um, with the tactile cue of the block, then you can try it wherever you are. You don't always have to walk around with a block between your legs in order to do it, but it's really helpful for kind of ensuring that your, your legs are healthfully aligned. You'll know they're externally rotated enough if you bend your knees and they point straight ahead. Most people, when you first bring the feet to be parallel, outside edges of the feet to be parallel and feet pointed straight ahead, if you bend the knees, they'll kind of go in toward each other. People will say, I feel knock kneed whenever I do this. So this compensation, this external rotation is to bring you back to neutral so that when you bend the knees, they point straight ahead. So how do you give yourself the reminder? What trigger do you feel inside that kind of gives you the little reminder or the cue that you need to do it? Well, I will say when I first realized that that was a thing that I wanted to concentrate and build strength with, I did actually keep a block 
at my standing desk. Oh, that's good. And yeah. I did it with a block for a while. And I kept one by the sink also. And I did it while I was doing dishes. Um, but now I, I don't always use a block. It's something that I kind of check in at, at different points in my house okay. uh, and in my apartment complex. Like if I'm standing at the top of the staircase, I always check in with my thigh rotation before going up or down the stairs. Nice. Because I notice a huge impact on my knees. My knees would hurt after going up and down stairs if I'm not really cautious and mindful of that. And then when I'm illustrating, it is also really in my knees and in my hips and pelvic floor where I can feel, when I start to feel fatigue there, then I I often realize that I have not been paying attention to my thigh rotation and I'll be more mindful of that. I love what you're explaining because that's what I really want to help empower people to see is that we're getting these little signals, these little like internal cues from our body all the time to, Hey, pay attention to this thing. We just have to get good at understanding and helping to interpret those signals so that we can give our body kind of the movement nutrient that it needs, that it's kind of signaling and asking for. Thank you so much for that great example. So tell us what has been, what has it been like for you or what have you found the most beneficial about working to weave movement into your day, Lindsay? I think the most beneficial part has just been the ability to actually get done the things that I needed to get done because I wasn't able to before. And like I said, I do a lot of standing. I do a lot of cooking and fermentation and chopping things. And I pretty much spend all of my day standing. I don't spend a lot of time sitting at a computer like a lot of people. And being able to recognize ways to not just stand poorly, but to move while I stand to incorporate mindfulness in my standing and moving around in the, you know, the tiny space of my apartment kitchen has been extremely helpful in just prolonging my stamina and my ability to get through the tasks that I need to get done. And the other thing that's been really fascinating for me is actually just to watch how my, my daughter naturally does these things. It's been amazing for me to see like how she just naturally goes into a functional squat or even how she'll naturally like stretch her calves on something. And it wasn't something that I ever would have noticed before, but I think it's kind of magical. I I agree completely. I think watching kids and you know what? I don't know if you have a dog or if you're ever around dogs or pets, but I also think pets are good examples of it too, because they're just better at like, if they need to move, they move. They don't sit still for prolonged periods of time. I know with my kids, I feel like every time we have this kind of dialogue with our kids, right? Like we think about programming them to be still and to behave. And every time I hear that, like kind of prompting come up in me, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. No. How about if I move? Like their, their movement inspires me and reminds me that it is a biological norm and I've conditioned my body out of it. And it's like a little gentle reminder. They're so inspiring. These kids. I love that. I love that. It, it definitely makes me feel the same way. I get a little prickly when people tell me that I should make her sit still or be calm and kind of like, she, she's all right. She's not doing anything. She's not harming anything. I think it's a, okay. It's okay for that to ask them to be calm in certain situations, but I think we have like a general belief that they should be calm all the time. Right. And that's just so not, when not the case. Come, when people come into my home and expect her to act or sit in a certain way, it's kind of like, I don't know, this is her environment. <laughs> yes, Exactly. How about if we all move with her? Let's let her be our leader. (laughs) Absolutely. I love that. All right, Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me. I am so grateful for you sharing your wonderful insights with the community. It was my pleasure. I've been very grateful for all of the work that you do and the really compassionate way that you present it. I'm always sharing with friends and trying to get them on board. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, friends, that's all for today. Don't forget to be a part of the Healthy Moving Olympics. Just make sure you click like on the Healthy Moving Facebook page and kind of pop in there. There'll be a new event every couple of days during the Olympics, so pop in there periodically over the next few weeks. I would be so grateful if you helped spread the word about the podcast. You can do that by subscribing, rating, and reviewing the show over in iTunes. That helps new people find the show, and I really appreciate your honest feedback and your honest review. And you can also share the link to your favorite episode with your peeps. The links for sharing are over at healthymoving.com forward slash podcast. 
Thanks for doing that and for listening. Until next time, friends, keep moving.